Congratulations, Carl Malone, 1996-97, NBA Most Valuable Player. Hey guys, this is Dominique Wilkins. Hey, this is Sean Kemp. This is Gary Payton. Hey, this is Paul Gasol. NBA fan, what's up? This is Vince Carter here. Hey, what's up? This is Matt Barnes. If you're an old school NBA fan like I am, make sure you check out the basketball time machine with my man Sean Davis. Hey folks, how's it going? Welcome back to the Basketball Time Machine. My name is Sean David. I hope you're ready for some old school NBA basketball. In today's episode, I want to take a look at NBA legends giving their opinion about how good Karl Malone, aka the mailman, really was. And it was pretty difficult to find some clips that you probably haven't seen before, but I did my best and I think I can hit you up with a couple of them. Anyway, but before we dive into today's episode, I want to ask you guys for a small favor. If you're new to the show, please subscribe, click the notifications button, and like the video if you enjoy the content. All right, enough said. Let's get right into it. So where do we start? Now, I would suggest let's start with Gary Payton, who obviously played one season with Karl Malone when they were both playing for the Los Angeles Lakers. The mailman could deliver buckets in just about any way. For nearly two decades, Karl Malone put the power in power forward. And by the time he retired, the two-time MVP ranked second all-time on the career scoring list. The mailman, I call him. Gators and Gators and jeans. He know what I'm talking about. Gators and jeans. He wear Gator boots and tight jeans. That's him. But to me, I think that was the greatest power forward ever. I just, I just have to say that because the, what he did on the block with him and John Stockton on the pick and roll, and he can get to where he wanted to do and put that foot, that knee in your chest as you go up and score the basketball the way he did. I don't care what nobody say, you could never handle Carl Malone on the block by yourself one-on-one. The mailman, Carl Malone! To see the little move where he put his hand behind his head. You're watching one of the all-time greats at any position, in any era. And the next clip that I found is actually from Eddie Johnson. Eddie Johnson, one of the best shooters of the 1990s, who didn't play with Carl Malone as far as I remember, but who obviously is an NBA analyst. And he's comparing Carl Malone and Tim Duncan to see who was better. So let's check it out. Who's better? The big fundamental, Tim Duncan, or the mailman, Carl Malone. One of the most difficult who's better I have ever done. Why? Because I love them both. Carl Malone, the second all-time leading scorer in the history of the NBA. 36,000 points and throw in 928 more. Wow. 10.2 rebounds in his career, 50% field goal shooter throughout, 3.6 assists, and so now, who's better? Tim Duncan, he's better, because basketball is about what? Winning. Did the Utah Jazz win consistently? Yes, they did. Did they get to NBA Finals? Yes, they did, but they never closed the deal. That will haunt my good friend, the mailman. Man, that, that guy physically was the most, one of the most imposing players to go against. And, and I think that hindered you oftentimes on how you wanted to approach it because I'd never seen a guy that big could run like that. I mean, he was incredible on the wing at running the floor. And even in our era, which is probably the most physical era we had, when you talk about basketball, nobody was getting in front of him. When you saw that train coming downhill, you were just a little shy about wanting to sacrifice your, your body. And, and, and you hear the line today about it being a business decision. That, that's what it was with Carl. You couldn't stop him with a Mack truck. I used to watch him punish all my guys. All of them. Every power forward I ever played with, we'd have to double. And he'd, he'd know we'd have to double. And he always wanted me to come down to double so he could drop it off to my guys. So every time he got the ball, he wasn't worried about the guy. He'd be looking at me to see what I was going to do. And if I didn't come, he'd just dribble, 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 and shoot the jump. And he'd be like, you better come, Shaq. You better come help him, Shaq. You better tell him who I am, Shaq. His uniqueness came from his ability to be, would you think he would be a gross motor skill guy? When I say gross, I mean 
Big steps, everything's big, boom, because of his size and strength. You just think of a fine motor skill, you think of Steph Curry, a guy who's kind of, who moves in like this. He was a guy who had both at his size. He could shoot the basketball, he could handle it, he ran the lane. He wasn't just a big, gross motor skill, skill guy. He was a guy who could use fine motor skills at such a big size. That was his uniqueness. And, man, I don't know if you know if there's another guy like that. I think of all the guys that was denied by MJ, I got to go with Carl Malone. I mean, Carl, we'll be talking about him as being probably the best power forward all time if he gets one, maybe two rings in that era. But, you know, there's no shame. Like you said, you lost to the greatest player of all time. I mean, I just couldn't imagine playing in a Jordan era to where it's like there's no rings available until those two years he, uh, he retired. Yeah, I got to go with Carl Malone as well. I mean, you, you think about the number of points that this cat put up. Uh, he's a two-time MVP, and he faced MJ the most in the finals uh, two years in a row. Uh, he was denied by the greatest player. What's the biggest motivating factor going into that series for you? Carl Malone getting MVP. I'm not saying he wasn't deserving of it. All I'm saying is that that fueled the fire in the main say, okay, you think he's the MVP? Okay, fine, no problem. Now the next clips that we're going to take a look at are from NBA Open Court. Again, my favorite show. Unfortunately, they don't post any episodes on YouTube anymore. And I think they actually don't do them anymore. But back in the days, a couple of years ago, that was my favorite NBA show. But let's have a look. I didn't think I was going to turn into Sir Charles. Out of Rodman and the Mailman, I think you guys would agree. Both of them were ahead of the curve when it comes to their time in the weight room. Conditioning. I mean, both of these sure. guys lived in the weight room. And if you look at... Uh, Carl, his rookie year, toward when he, you know, you see how big and, and how muscular and still to be able to be that flexible and run the floor, to me, and I'm not trying to stroke you at all, but look, you and Carl, to me, are the, the greatest power forwards of all time. And you talk about guys being able to go coast to coast with the basketball, you can throw Tim in there, no disrespect, because you played with him, but no one was going to get in your way and no one was going to get in Carl's way. <laughs> you know, but you know the thing, the interesting thing, like Carl, his work ethic was fabulous. You know, seeing his work ethic, it really, it really impressed me. And then one thing about Carl Malone, when I got hurt, I respected Carl Malone. I've always respected him. But, you know, it's something when you lose your athletic ability and you rely on certain things. And for certain things I relied on. And with Carl, I always noticed it was still hard to check him, even though I had certain advantages or he had a system. And you knew he was the only guy that with the ball, he would beat the defender up. Now think about that, because he would drop those elbows on you when he spin, and the officials were not gonna call offensive fouls back then. You had to you had to man up and guard him. And look, man, he was 6'9, 270 pounds, quick, fast, and strong. You couldn't guard him. You could only hope that he missed some shots, but he was just a load, man. Did you ever face a, a more intimidating combination of skill and physicality than Carl Malone? Never. Never. And and the thing about Carl was. He didn't do it with any flair. It was just, he came right at you like a freight train. Like, no Euro step to get past you. It was, I'm going through you or you getting out of the way. Because early in the game, he would tell you, if you get in front of me, I will run you over. Because guess what? <laughs> You're not going to be able to take that same charge in the fourth quarter. He would literally run you over. So you had to understand, it was going to be a long physical night. And not only were you going to take some punishment, but you had to suck it up and give some because you just couldn't be on the receiving end of those beatings for 48 minutes. Carl Malone taught me it was okay to be an outdoorsman. Carl told me one time in the Olympics, I fish, I hunt, I do logs, you guys like rap music, whatever, this is what I do. And after hanging out with him, I was like, you know what? I like to fish, I like to hunt, I like to ride horses. So me and Carl, we have a special relationship, but as a player, it's the reason why he's the number one two scorer in the league. Well, he's one of the greatest players to ever played a game, one of the greatest power fours ever played a game. Stockton, right side of the road. 
So how good was Karl Malone in my opinion? Now, most of you guys know that there's a lot of controversy going on with Karl Malone's private life, but I'm just talking about Karl Malone, the basketball player. And I think he's definitely not only one of the best power forwards of all time, but I think if he would have won a couple of championships, there would be a legit argument if he could have been the best power forward of all time. But he never had the supporting cast. I mean, yes, he had John Stockton, but other than that, he didn't have any Hall of Famers he was playing with. So we will never know what could have happened, but in my books, Karl Malone, definitely one of the best players of all time. Anyway, you guys, that was it for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed the content. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time on the Basketball Time Machine.